Y'all better tighten up. Hey, what's up guys? It's Big Drew. I'm just giving you guys an idea of what I thought about the Hercules Potion. I was very, very skeptical, like, you know, some of you are, if it would work or not, if I would feel it or not, like, what's the point? Is it just in your head? I tried it last night, insane pump in my biceps. Honestly, I train biceps, you guys see my videos, real heavy, 100 pound dumbbells, 120 pound dumbbells. I grabbed the 20 pound dumbbells after using that. 10, 20 reps, my biceps were on fire. I haven't had a pump like that, honestly, in years. There really isn't um, any too much out there that's gonna give you that specific pump to that exact body part. So that stuff works real, real good, guys. Any lagging body parts you have, use it, blast them. You can see a difference immediately. And other, like other stuff, it doesn't just last five or 10 minutes. I mean, it keeps the pump going on and on. You guys wanna go to the beach? I live in Florida. If you wanna go to the beach and have a pump all day, Try it in the morning time, do some push-ups, dips, whatever your routine is to get that pump. Because you guys all know we got a routine to get that pump. So check it out, Hercules Potion, Titan Medical Center. Tell them Big Drew sent you. That stuff is great. Pump is serious. What's up guys, John here with Big Drew, and we're gonna go over five tips to help you guys get stronger and not get hurt in the gym every time. These tips and tricks me and Drew use, and they're gonna set you up for long-term success and results with keeping you healthy and strong. The first one, hydrate. Yes, definitely wanna hydrate, guys. The muscle is made mostly of water, as everybody, well not everybody knows, but if you guys don't know, the muscle is made up of a lot of water. So you, if, there, if there's not water in there, that's how it tears, which I've done. Absolutely. I've torn both biceps. <laughs> um, but you want to make sure you're hydrated when you go in the gym. You want to make sure the muscle is basically lubricated so when you're lifting heavy, it doesn't tear. Yeah. I'm trying to compare it to like maybe a piece of paper. If a piece of paper is bone dry, it just tears easy. If it's wet, it's a little bit harder to tear. The muscle is the same way. So you want to keep your body hydrated. And also, it's going to help you from getting dizzy. It's yep. going to help you from cramping. Yep. And it's also going to help you, you know, feel better. If you, if you sweat a lot, you also want to hydrate too. So I'll always, always stay hydrated. And don't just hydrate at the gym. Yep. A lot of times people don't drink enough. They bring a gallon of water to the gym. They chug that gallon at the gym. That's actually worse because their body's not used to the water. So right. when they take it in, they're just going to piss it right back out. Right. So what you want to do is hydrate the night before, hydrate throughout the day. So that way the next day you go to the gym, you can still continue to sip your water, but it's actually going to affect you. And it's yep. not just going to be chugging water. Yep. You want to continuously drink water the same way you continuously have your meals. Yep. You guys know meals every two to three hours have water every 30 minutes to an hour. If you don't have time for it, set the reminder on your phone. Yep. If you drink one bottle of water every hour, you're over a gallon of water every day. Absolutely. So it's really not that hard to get your water in. Just make sure you drink eight bottles of water a day, which is a gallon, yep. and you won't have that muscle tear. Absolutely, so like Drew was talking about, so not only is the muscle mainly consistent of water, but the body's over 70% of water. That's right, so your body is basically made up of a lot of water. Your yeah. blood, everything that goes into it is water-based. So water's 
it's essential for your hydration and for your health, along with getting results. And not only just helping you hydrate, but it's also gonna help flush toxins out through the day, especially when you're working out and you're sweating right. and you're getting all these toxins out of your body. You gotta replenish those fluids so it's key so you don't dehydrate and you don't end up hurt in the hospital right. or, or just not looking good because even your vascularity can depend on the amount of water that you're continuously pushing through your body at that point. So right. stay hydrated. Yes. It's essential for your body, essential for your health, and great for your workouts. The second one, stretch and warm up before you start. Yes. So I think, you know, the older that me and Drew get, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the more that we have to stretch and warm up to make yeah. sure that our bodies are ready to Definitely. take on the progressive <laughs> load or weight that yeah. we're going to push or the strain that we're going to push on our body yeah. without hurting ourselves. Yeah. So I definitely stretch, definitely warm up. If you don't, if you don't like to stretch, because there's a thing where stretching fatigues the muscle, and a lot of people don't want to stretch too much because they feel it fatigues the muscles. They can't lift as much or do as much volume or whatever they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Then do a warm up. Right. If you're doing legs, get on the bike, walk, do something. Don't just go right into your workout from uh, uh, sitting at a desk all day, or yeah. even if you're walking around all day, you're not walking around in the gym. So you're not doing the same movements in the gym as you're doing throughout the rest of your day. So you wanna warm up those movements to get them ready. Right. So even if you're squatting, just do some body weight, body weight warm ups. You don't have to necessarily put your legs behind your head like a yoga instructor, yeah. <laughs> but you wanna just make sure you get blood in the muscle. You wanna make sure everything is lubricated and going that way you're not gonna have, you know, the tears and all that stuff yep. too. So tears if you don't stretch, warm up. If you don't warm up, stretch. Yep. But if you don't do it, if you do both of them, it's even better. Yes. But yes. um, do definitely do one of the two, otherwise, it's only a matter of time for something pops and you can't look good and you can't train and it's a whole nother issue and then you, it never gets back. You know, Absolutely. So it's, it's a big part of your workout and for you to get a healthy workout without having any injuries. Obviously stretching, especially when you get older and stuff like that, you're going to feel like your joints might be hurting you more. They might be a lot more tighter, muscles, ACLs, all these different things uh, go right along with stretching and warming up. Whether it's just stretching, you know, your if you're doing chest and you're doing your shoulders or your legs or whatever it may be, getting the blood flowing. That's the old yep. term that we used to use. Uh, at that point, you're getting the blood, you're getting everything stretched out. Um, so it's not gonna be real tight. So if you go in there and you do have a pretty stressful, you know, like session or, or, yep. or set, um, you don't hurt yourself on the way up or anything like that. You don't feel pops, you don't, you know, hurt shoulders, knees, joint areas. Because like you said, once you get hurt, mm -hmm. it's gonna start putting you behind, the, you know, the eight ball at that point. And then you have to work your way up just to where you're at now, just to get ahead and start progressing again. And mentally, it will basically you'll be screwed yes because yes. you're not going to be able to go to the gym you're going to yeah. want to go to the gym the everything else in your body is going to be working fine with that one muscle yeah. group yeah. and you can't work out you don't want to be lopsided so you can't just work out one side Absolutely. it's not worth it guys no it definitely isn't and you know it, it's it's true what they say that you know everything is connected so if you hurt let's say your shoulder you're not going to go through bicep curls or it might hurt you shoulder lifts bench press and all these different things so everything's connected so make sure you guys realize that and you guys are doing proper stretching or warm-ups okay before you work out number three don't go the heaviest right when you get in the gym don't be egotistical yeah. okay i think we've all been there yeah i um, used to be i used yeah. to be that guy like, i used to be that guy go to the gym like peak hours 6 30 and yep. throw 405 or 315 in my first set and just watch people <laughs> Now I could do it, but I'm yeah. going to be, you know, injured. I'm going to have, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not Work the same. smarter, not harder, basically, yeah. at this point. You know, you go in there and you don't have to lift the heaviest in the gym. Make sure your form is correct. Yeah. Make sure you're getting the right amount of reps in your set. Mm -hmm. And that could be, you know, depending on what you are or where you're at, right. it could be a lot more, a lot less. Just make yeah. sure that you're getting that proper uh, workout in without going the heaviest and being egotistical of girls around or whatever. Yeah, guys yeah, around, yeah. Whatever yeah. It is. That's exactly what it is, too. Yeah. You know, you got, when you go into the gym, if you have, if, say, if, if you got to have a game plan too so exactly. when you go in the gym when you have a game plan that I'm gonna work out shoulders or I'm not even that say if you have a game plan I'm gonna work out legs and then you go in there and you see everybody on the bench yeah you see everybody crowd around you see guys lifting heavyweight you see people impressed with the heavyweight yeah. and you know you could warm up with that weight yeah so if you don't if you don't stick to the game plan you went in there to train legs and then now all of a sudden your ego's kicking in you want to go over there just to show off and get injured, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta stick to what you're normally supposed to be doing. Don't just do it because there's a crowd of people. Wait for the crowd of people if you're a power lifter at the event or if you're a bodybuilder at the show or if it's spring break and you wanna show off your body or if it's vacation with the wife and kids and you wanna show off for the pictures. Yeah. Wait for that to, yep. to show up. Don't just randomly do it. No. For the gym with just a bunch of heads Strangers. you don't really even know yeah, yeah. for an ig pick or something <laughs> like that you know? it's not worth it so that's number four having a game plan yes. and having a game plan right when you walk in there 
or having a game plan beforehand, knowing what you're gonna hit as far as body part wise, mm -hmm. how many sets possibly, knowing what you're gonna do right going in there, not just going in there and, and going off the seat of your pants or flying off the seat of your pants. Now, once you get more experience this season, I, I think, you know, if you got an extra time to go in there, you're like, listen, I'm just gonna go hit the gym. Yeah. You can go in there and you can start hitting it and maybe do that. Mm -hmm. But right off the bat, when you're really trying to get somewhere, have a game yeah. plan. It's like, it's like using a roadmap, right? Mm -hmm. Or having those directions beforehand of where you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. You know exactly how you're going to get there and you're laying out each yeah. step. Yeah. Um, you know, now you can take this in your, your brain as far as remembering of what you're doing, or you have to write it down. That's fine. Yeah. That's and, we have, and if you guys don't have a game plan, we have one now. We right. have the Titan Fitness right. program done. We have the game plan. So if you guys don't want to come up with it yourself, yep. get our game plan, yep. take it, and then use the other four things we're giving you and go to work out. Exactly, go. exactly. We will give you the lowdown on exactly what you should be doing, when you should be doing it. So you can always have us there for help. Next one. Fifth and final one, progressive load to get stronger. All right, so we talked about, you know, staying healthy, not getting hurt in the gym and getting stronger. How do you do this? So it's progressive overload. That means that you're working up more weight every time that you go in there. Um, and it's specific, and it don't have to be a lot of weight. So right, a lot of people right. think that, listen, I gotta go up 50 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever it is, um, you know, next time I go in there, because I'm just trying to get stronger and faster. Right. You know, we know that muscles get stronger faster than ligaments and tendons and stuff like that. So you have to progressively get everything stronger and be on yeah. the same level. Yes, you don't want to just, and you don't want to just get into, um, if you're trying to get stronger, don't just do more reps with the same weight. So a lot of, a lot of people go in, oh, I bench this amount of time. I can bench this weight for 10 reps. Right. My goal is to get it to 15 reps. If you're trying to get stronger, increase right. the weight. Right. Keep the rep range the same. So right. don't just, I mean, I've, I've fallen victim to that too. Yep. Um, but you want to make sure that you, uh, if you want to get stronger, don't just increase your reps. A lot, of I see that a lot of times. A lot of guys are like, yeah, I used to be able to. Um, your stamina might be better. Absolutely, doesn't mean you're stronger. Absolutely, it might be the Hercules is kicking a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely, but it doesn't mean you're stronger. So I mean, you may have more stamina, but if you actually want to push more weight one time, yep. you know, you got to get the weight. Even if it's the little two point five, the little girly two point five, exactly. you see, exactly. throw that on there. Throw a five pound on there. I mean, yeah. who cares? Like, you're getting stronger. You're yeah. you're adding more weight on. Anything in life you want to progress. So why not just do it in the gym with your weights? One hundred percent. Because if you stay at the exact same weight and you're doing the exact same sets and stuff like that, like he's talking about, you're gonna stay at that same weight and you're not gonna get any stronger. You're gonna be great. You're gonna be maintained. Yeah. Um, but you're not gonna keep going up and progressing. And if you want the mirror to change, that's probably not gonna change that much either. Right. So you right. know, always want to progress. You always want to do better. Anything, anything you do, even anything. with your diet, with your with your parenting, with the, anything you want to do, you yeah. want to get better. So why not do it the same? The same. If you go to work every single day, if you Working the same job, making the same hourly wage or same salary if you get salary. Mm -hmm. If you had to, why would you? A lot of people go to the gym, and I see these guys go to the gym and they go in there, they'll, you know, they'll do squats three sets of 10, bench three sets of 10, and leave. They've been doing that for five, six years. Right. If I asked them if they made the same amount of money five, six years ago, they'd laugh at me, yeah. but they're doing the same thing at the gym, so why not switch it up? Yeah. You know, it's got, you got to get better in life. I'm never going backwards, I promise you that. Absolutely. They're, they're expecting different results and doing the exact same thing. Yeah. And the definition of that is insanity. You do the exact same thing over and over and over and expect a different result, that's insanity. Yes. So don't go insane. You know what you're supposed to do, do it, okay? Yes. If you're going in there and you're putting the work, why not get a benefit out of it, all right? I, I do see this a lot too, like you were talking about. You see the exact same people in there doing the exact same thing. They're very consistent, yeah. being in there three or four days. And, and they're they, in shape too. I mean, they, they don't their, their body looks great. Though. But they look exactly the same. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at that point, you want to change, you want to get a good change, and this is how to do it. Yeah. So these are just five tips and tricks that me and Drew came up with for you guys to stay healthy, stay strong, right, and not get hurt in the gym. That's it. Hydrate, stretch, warm up, don't go heavy, game plan, and make sure you have a progressive overload. Five tips, let's go. Also, 2 p.m. Tight Lifestyle, Friday, let's go. she's talking about <sighs> people are losing their sense of smell or taste mm -hmm. it's affected your central nervous system it can get in the spinal fluid it can get in the cerebral fluid it can affect your brain that's why people have foggy thinking and concentration <clears throat> issues so COVID-19 is very serious we have no idea what the future health problems could be from this yeah. thing either and that's a really scary thing like down the road what is this gonna happen <clears throat> what's this gonna cause right so taking care of inflammation is key. And this is all the time. Inflammation in your body is what causes a lot of health issues. And this just spikes inflammation <clears> through the roof. 
So you guys want to make sure that you guys are protecting yourselves. I know the mask thing is a, you know, it's a big political thing now. It's a pain in the butt. I you get know? it. You don't want to wear um, it. I understand. I've been there. I'm telling you because I'm being honest with you guys and I've been down the same exact road where it was like when it first came out, everybody's scared. Woo, 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 scared. Wear my mask. Oh my God, I don't want to get sick. Then you go through the whole thing where it's like, man, I don't know that many people that got sick. Right. You know, I'm like, shoot, I don't know anybody that got sick. Right. I'm like, maybe it's, maybe it is just a thing and they wanted to keep us all inside. Who who knows? Then you start thinking about a hundred different things because you're in quarantine. And what else are you going to think about? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You're in quarantine. You're going crazy. Yeah. So you're thinking about 500 million different things that it could be. Yeah. But then... You know, someone like me, I'm going to share my experience with you guys yeah. because to this day, they still don't know like when my symptoms are going to go away. And all I do is I pray every day when I get up that I get up, first of all. But the second thing is that that I feel normal again mm -hmm. because like I need to feel normal. Yeah. I need to be able to feel normal. Get up. I want to breathe. There's things that you take for granted as far as like being able to walk properly because my legs are swollen. I'm taking that for granted because I run up and down the stairs. I run up and down the hall at work. I get all these things done. Being able to lie flat and have a very nice sleep. I can't sleep flat because I can't breathe. You know, so it's like you take things for granted, you know, and you just you don't realize it until you are in this position. And so I just I want people to take it serious because there's been a lot of people that have been hospitalized for it. There's a lot of people out there that I haven't told you guys that they have COVID. This is and true. And they don't want to tell you guys. And listen, it took a lot out of me to be able to put it out there publicly. Hey, listen, I, I got diagnosed with COVID. And the only reason I even did it, to be totally honest with you guys, because on any other occasion, say I was asymptomatic like John, and I didn't go through what I'm going through right now currently, Maybe I wouldn't have shared it. Maybe I wouldn't have told everybody. And there's a lot of people out there that are positive and they're not telling anybody. And it's because they don't want to be X'd out. You know, they yeah. don't want to be that person that's like, oh, no, 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 let me not go near you. Yeah. You know, but when you come down to the CDC guidelines, it is what it is. You know, 10 to 14 days, you quarantine, you're done. It is, it's done. You know, that's your quarantine time frame. Shed the virus. Yeah. You're good. You know, some people, they do hold that viral overload for yeah. a longer period of time. Yeah. So has there been people that have tested, you know, two, three, four, five, six weeks out and they're still positive? Yes. yes. But after that 14 day time, time frame they're saying and this is coming from the health department because yeah. we talked to them <laughs> so yeah that's another thing so if you do test positive you guys will be contacted by a track and tracer mm -hmm. usually you'll have a caseworker from the health department in your county okay that's what happened with us we have a specific person we can call we talk to they were checking on us making sure we were isolated who we came in contact with all these good things um, after they do isolate you they find out that you're good to go they will send you a letter stating that you're good and cleared um, from isolation and being able to go out and you're fine to go out in the public again so you will have a caseworker now they're so backed up and there's so many cases of positive cases that they haven't might not have got to it because some people are like well i tested you know positive like six weeks ago i haven't got a call you're going to get a call okay they're tracking and tracing there are these people out here they're going to be your case workers they're going to be able to help you guys some people don't want to cooperate with them some people are getting subpoenas because of this okay um you're gonna have to cooperate with them and it's probably a good thing so they can get all this information so they can really help people i know some people think it's a government scandal you know even if it is i, I guess i mean what are they going to do they're going to track and trace us uh, well, maybe they should. You know what, you know? guys? To be honest with you, if you have an iPhone or if you have any phone or if you have an iPad or if you have anything at all that you talk to people on, so if you aren't, like, looking at this right now in, like, some woods over in, like, I don't even know, somewhere on, like, Never Never Land, they're tracing you. Yeah. So it's irrelevant. To be totally honest with you, it's irrelevant. And I'm telling you guys right now, you don't want to be that person that has to be hospitalized by yourself in a COVID unit. So it's not fun. Here's the thing, guys. You guys want to be educated about some things. So we're going to give you guys some inside knowledge. And we've talked to a couple different people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19. There's a couple of drugs out there that could work possibly in your situation. If you're getting hit with COVID very bad, right, and you're just declining in health every day, there's obviously a drug called remdesivir. 
Okay. They ran out. They have a very limited supply of rendesivir. They ran out. What two days ago? Oh, thirty-three percent. I was in the hospital. Um, it, it, it's supposed to help. You know, up to thirty-three percent of recovery faster, especially when people are in bad situations. <clears throat> they have been using hydroxychloroquine in some situations, um, but dexamethasone and rendesivir have been used um, quite frequently mm -hmm. and That's often where dexamethasone is readily available yeah um it's a steroid that decreases inflammation in the body and you will know help you breathe and, and stuff like that there is a there's a fine line with the dexamethasone because again this is and you'll ask any doctor that you know is going to be treating you they have to weigh your you know what your situation is yeah. because you have risk to remember, versus reward yeah you have to remember when you go on a steroid like that it can decrease your immune system right. you need your immune system to fight it to fight it so right. it's like okay if you're not having any of the inflammation issues then let's not put you on the dexamethasone let's get something to boost your immune system and let your immune system do what it needs to do but if you might be in a situation like mine where you're having involuntary movements of your central nervous system then you might need the dexamethasone right Always check with the medical provider. Yeah, have the knowledge about these medications <clears throat> to, to ask them. them. To ask. Because if you don't ask, you don't bring it up, they might not bring it up. They may and not. If you push hard enough, they probably will. I know one friend who was in uh, <sighs> who was in the hospital uh, many days, nine days, and he was getting worse and worse and worse, declining. They talked about possibly using rendesivir for him, and he was like, you guys better give me this rendesivir at that point because I'm not going to risk my life for this and force them to basically give it to them. They're on a limited amount of supply of this drug, okay? I, I, I just seen that we've secured 90% of this drug for the next three <clears throat> months of production. But at that point, it's only 500,000 units as of what we're gonna get is what I heard. So at that point, it's gonna be very limited and they're not gonna bring it up. But if you're in a bad situation and you think that your health or life is at risk, I told Teresa the exact same thing. Ask them for these medications. These people ultimately are working for you. They're getting paid by you and your insurance company. And at that point, if they don't do it, what I would do personally, and I would never do this, I'm not this type of guy, but if my life was on the line and I thought mm. I was really, really critically ill, not some cough or, or some sneezing and some body aches, but I was literally, I couldn't breathe. I, I can't I, I can't focus. Everything is going downhill. I know my body better than you. I would literally get on Facebook Live, man. <laughs> I'd be like, listen, if you guys don't do this, I'm gonna open this up to the world and let people know what's going on. I really do. <gasps> Sharing that information, I think that's key. I, I do wanna share information while I have you guys on oh, here man. too. They also did um, have me take um, two shots of Levinox, I think it was. It's a blood thinner. And the reason why they have you do that is because it is a fact that COVID is going into your system and there's something with COVID that is causing blood clots. And it's not just causing blood clots in your lungs right. or just in like your leg or whatever it might be. They're actually causing these little minute blood clots throughout your GI tract, liver, your kidneys, all right. these little areas. So even if you have been diagnosed with COVID, baby aspirin, you yeah. know, they, they are, they did have, they have me on my discharge paperwork having, they do have me taking baby aspirin. Bare 80 milligrams is <laughs> what it is. Days. Okay, that's not gonna hurt you even, no matter what, you can take baby aspirin, baby aspirin. 80 milligrams. Yeah. Um, Bare is usually the one that they always suggest. <laughs> So at that point, you guys know. You guys know some of these facts. These are facts. This is not fiction. This is not myth. This is not I think. You know, I have a lot of people out there where I look through social media today, and they're all commenting about COVID this, COVID that. You guys don't know what COVID-19 is unless you've had COVID-19. Or maybe you've had it asymptomatic, so you don't think it's a you big deal, lucky. right? You got lucky. You don't think it's a big deal. I really don't think COVID is a big deal, like as far as me getting it, but seeing people I love have it and going through this, or my friends being hospitalized, I take it very serious, all right? And I think everybody out there should take it very serious as well. I don't care what you wanna repost on these social media things, and you're, you know, Dr. Google here or there. Guys, take it from people that have COVID-19 or have went through it and have had, had these symptoms or went through these hospitalizations. Guys, I'm on day 23 and I have fluid in the back of my spine right now and I cannot walk up and down the stairs without my husband's help. So, I, so I, want, I want everybody out there to take it very serious. It's serious. It's not just for you, for your loved ones, for your kids, for people out there, okay? Me, your neighbors, it, whoever it is. Anyone. It could be your mom. It could be your dad, your aunt. It could be your grandma, your grandpa. It could be your neighbor. Yeah. You know, it, it, this has really come down to, like, morals. Yeah. And, you know, it's made me... This 
entire thing and I will do a video on it at some point when I'm feeling better but like it's changed my life and it's changed the way I look at some things in life and it's come down to morals because at the end of the day wear the mask not just for you just do it for everyone else wear it properly too if we gotta wear them wear them properly please come on I mean I mean please it's not guys. that difficult please. like for what sanitize your hands be Wash clean hands. people you know right when we got out of this I seen people going right back to the old ways I seen people going to the bathroom and not even washing their hands after all this, after being locked down, people getting this, you know, and people still they just go, they just reverted right back to what it was. Like, oh, we're fine now. We're out, we're out of the woods. Guys, we are not out of the woods. So at that point, do the right thing for you, maybe not for you, for somebody else, okay? Because you don't know who it's going to affect. You don't know who you're going to give it to if you do got and you're asymptomatic. Hey, guys, and, and remember, I want you to remember this because I hear it all the time. And now it does make me mad. I'm under 35. I weigh 125 pounds and I'm truly not unhealthy at all. So this thing, it doesn't have like a specific type of person it's going to pick. Right. It's not going to pick you because you're obese. It's not going to pick you because of the color of your skin. It's not going to pick you because you're 80. It's not going to pick you because you're 12. It's just going to pick who you, whoever wants to pick and then you're going to get whatever it's going to give you. And legitimately, it is the invisible enemy. <clears throat> you will not see it coming. You will not know in some circumstance that you have it. You might think you have allergies because you're getting sniffles. You might have a, a little sore throat. You might say, oh, my sore just a little throat because I stayed out all night or whatever it is. And I'm telling you guys, if you guys think that you have this or you guys are getting symptoms, get tested. Get tested. Get tested. Just get right? tested. Now, when you get tested, make sure you get a negative result. At that point, don't go to hot spots and do stupid stuff. That was another thing. I tell people, hey, listen, this is a hot spot. Don't go there. What do I see people do? Going right to the hot spot. Without a mask, without anything, enclosed, don't do it. It's very irresponsible. <laughs> Guys, protect and then, yourselves. And then, you know, it's one thing. It's it's irresponsible, but here's where it comes even more irresponsible, is when you don't live by yourself. Right. You know, be, if you live by yourself with your cat, your dog, whatever, cool. All right, go home, do whatever you want to be irresponsible, go be irresponsible by yourself. But then you have people that... You live with your little brother. You live with your your mom, your dad, your grandma on chemo. You go into work. You might spread it to your coworkers, the co-workers who then take it home to their families and who they might have, have high risk. They have high risk, right? Families. Kids. You have no idea who it's going to affect. Just think about it, guys. Like I'm just, it's you guys. Like I'm telling you guys, the last 22 days of my life have been the worst 22 days of my life ever. And I am a soldier. I am a soldier, and I'm still going through it. And I'm like every day I wake up hoping that I feel better. So I hope tomorrow I don't have swelling in my back so that I can walk. So I'm telling you guys, it's serious. It's really serious. Very serious. And it's very real. And I am going to attest to it. It's real. I've had it. It's not fun. So please, guys, do the right thing. We want to share the COVID-19 experience with you guys to let you guys know what the facts were and the truth was about this and what we went through personally with our family. So don't let it happen to yours. Be safe, be cautious, and be healthy. Bye, guys.